Hello, in this video I'll show you some freeform modeling techniques. So let's just begin with a plane here. And I will center this, give this a gray material and black object color. So usually when you begin polygonal modeling, you will start by extruding edges, moving it around, inserting loops. And then you can bevel and extrude and use various operations. And this is fine for a lot of things, but sometimes you want to speed up the workflow, especially when you're creating more organic rounded shapes. So I just select this polygon, control I and delete. And the first thing we're going to actually use is down here, mesh smooth and tessellate. So I just clear this within group. The difference between these is that if I extrude this outwards, I can select all these vertices. And when I use tessellate, it's going to add additional geometry, make this more dense, but it's not going to smooth anything out. Whereas if I press control Z to undo and use mesh smooth, it's actually going to subdivide this just like using turbo smooth. So what we can do is go into freeform and we can use shift right here. If you hover over here, you get all of the hotkeys. If we simply click, we can move around vertices. If we're in edge level, we can also just move around the vertices as well. So it doesn't matter what level you're in. The way you move vertices corresponds to the alignment of your camera. So if you're moving from the top, you move it mostly on the X and Y axis from the side, you can use the Z axis. So you can hold control, click the left mouse button, then move your mouse up and down to change the fall off. But you can also do simply zoom in and out using the scroll wheel on your mouse. If you zoom out far enough, you get to control all the vertices. If you zoom in closely, you control just one or two. So control is for changing the fall off radius. Shift and drag is for changing the full strength radius and shift all is for changing the actual strength value. So I'll just use the default for now. So we can set the initial shape that we want right here. We can very quickly get it just by moving around these vertices. So while you've got the shift tool active, you can actually press control A to select everything and control D to deselect. So I'll press control A and then mesh smooth. And now I have more vertices to work with. So I can now continue to model here. And now I can just use Mesh Smooth again. And the great thing about this is you can always right click to exit out of shift mode and just do regular modeling operations. So I can use Swift Loop to insert a loop through here and hold down shift to apply Cephal right away. And quickly add more even polygons here. So now when I'm ready to print another piece, I'll just take one of these polygons and detach this clone. And I can also apply the symmetry modifier on this as well. And I can apply it to both smooth as well. And I can begin to create the next shape. And I can activate Show in results, so I can just see what the symmetry and turbo smooth will do. So, I can, for example, just create this piece right here, then I can just right click exit and just quickly do some basic modeling. So, I can chamfer here, for example, open and then quickly get these kinds of results. And now I can just select this element here, mesh smooth and continue using shift. So using this technique, you get a very fast workflow here. 
You can quickly experiment with shapes. You can always just kind of exit out of here and do some regular modeling. Another thing you can do is to change the reference coordinate system from view to let's say screen, which will actually change the gizmo according to where your camera is. So if you use something like view or world, the gizmo, the Z, Y, and X axis will always be pointing in the same direction. If you change it to screen, it will always be changing. So it's a great way to quickly change the gizmo to suit where you want to move your sub-objects. It can take some getting used to, but once you do, you'll find yourself having some great results and faster control. So sometimes as you're modeling using shift, freeform tools, or something else, you'll find yourself wanting to quickly flatten out your selection. For example, flatten out this part, or let's say this part right here. So I'll show you the techniques I use for this. The first thing you can do is use Make Planar, which will take your selection and find the average normals of all of these and flatten your selection out to that. So sometimes this can be unpredictable, but many times it'll give you a good result, such as right here. I can also use it right here, flatten this out. So that's one technique. Another technique is to use a custom grid. So I'll go into create helpers and create a grid right here. And I'll right click and activate the grid. And you can also right click and activate the home grid. So of course the home grid is your default grid right here. So if you notice how the home grid looks right now, and when I activate this custom grid, the home grid reverts to this more basic state right here, which lets you know that the custom grid is being active, but right now we can't really see it. And that's because we have to actually lower some of these settings here. Let's try lowering the spacing to let's say two, and now we can actually see it. I'll just give it the same length and width segment right here. So now what I can do is use the clever text script, which I like to use to position objects. However, you can also simply use this tool right here, selecting place, where you can click on this grid, and then just drag over here to put it where you want it to be. But I prefer to use the clear text script to position it where I want it to be. So for example, push it right here. And now, when I select these polygons, I'll switch this from screen to grid. I am now actually using the orientation of the grid to move these objects. So right now the z-axis is perfectly aligned with this grid right here. So I can move it exactly in this direction. Let's say for example right now, all of these polygons, as you can see, are uneven. And I want to quickly make them even. So I'll just select the grid, position, let's say, right here. And now I can select all of these polygons. All right, let's say, and these right here. And now I can use grid align. If this custom grid is not active, when you use grid align, it will align with the home grid right here. So if I activate the home grid, and then select these polygons and use grid align, you can see it's actually being flat with the home grid. That's why you actually want to make sure that a custom grid is active and it will take over. Also, if you create new objects, they'll be created on the custom grid. So it's a great way to create an object right here where you want it to be, 
and quickly insert it. So let's say, for example, I want to create some sort of rectangular detail right in here. First, I'll position a custom grid in here. I'm going to rotate it here just to be as planar as possible. And now I can create a little box right here. And now, for example, I'll just increase the height here. And I can even use symmetry, which is using the object's local symmetry right here. So we're going to create these kinds of objects. Let's say X symmetry and then Y symmetry. And I can copy these two modifiers. So now let's say if I just do some quick basic modeling. And now I may have to actually flip this. There we are. So now that we have this box here, how can we get the surrounding geometry to perfectly fit around the box? Well, there are several ways we can do this. Of course, I can always just activate snap, make sure that vertex snap is on, activate snaps. Now I can actually just snap from here to here. There we are. And it can snap from here to here. But of course, there won't always be a vertex to snap to. So what we can do is also activate edge snap as well. So now we can actually snap this vertex to this edge. There we are. So now, even if we don't have a vertex here, we can still snap it. In this situation, however, because of this topology, we actually do have vertices right here. So we actually could turn off edge. But if this object was more simple, we would not have this vertex in the center here. So we could just use edge instead. So we could snap this vertex to these edges. There we are. So it can take a little bit of getting used to because when you hop over here, you notice how it tends to snap to the edges. We can also easily snap to vertices as well. And here you can just turn off edge and just snap the vertices. So there we go. And as you can see now, this object is perfectly aligned on this side. Another technique you can use is to actually select the custom grid and position it right here. I can select all of these polygons and use grid align. And I can see the bottom of this box is perfectly aligned with this grid. But in this case, it would actually be a better idea to align the grid with the box instead of the previous object. Like so. And grid align. So using a custom grid is a great way to quickly clean up your object and to get things snapping together just right. And I can also snap these vertices to this box as well. So after doing some freeform modeling, it's a good idea just to take your geometry and clean it up. For example, in this case, I can just remove these edges. 
and I can also use snap to quickly just snap and clean everything up here. Now make sure that edge is also on. So you can see I can easily snap the vertex to this edge to make them perfectly fit together here. So now let's say I want to apply symmetry to this object. If I simply apply symmetry, it's actually using the object's local orientation right here. So if I try to move it, we get this result right here. If I move it to zero, as you can see, it does not quite symmetrify properly. So what I can do instead is actually just go into mirror again, change this to local, or A to align, align with this object, and also activate align orientation X Y and Z axis, which is actually the rotation, and there we go. Now it's perfectly symmetrified here. So I hope these techniques help you model impressive looking objects and have them fit together nicely and work together well. Thank you for watching and take care.